1. So what I want you guys to do in this case is <clears throat> once you have simplified them, um, I'll make sure you also are dividing the restrictions. Okay. So the first thing we want to do for number 2 is um, obviously simplify this. So our factor this. So let's see, I know this trinomial can be broken down into a product of two binomials. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, OK. Um, so this can be broken down to a product of two binomials. They need to multiply to give me two. Since that's an um, addition, that means it's going to be sum to give me a 5x. So therefore, I'm thinking plus 2 and plus 1, 4x, 1x, which is 5x. Looks good to me. All over, x minus 1 times. Here, I can factor out a 2x. And then over here, I notice that this is a difference of two squares, 2x minus 1 and a 2x plus 1. Okay. So now that I've written this out, I've factored everything, I could write this as one large fraction. This is usually not, it's not required. But if you guys wanted to, you could do it this way. Because if you're just multiplying something across, like you guys could just write them all together. Now, for the sake of time, this is not really usually a best use of time to be rewriting everything one more time. But you can do it to make sense of everything, realizing that everything is being separated by multiplication. So therefore, I can apply the division property where I have the same term in the numerator and the denominator x minus 1's, 2x plus 1. So therefore, I'm left with a 2x times an x plus 2 all over a 2x minus 1, where my function is not defined. Again, going back up here, not here, but going back up here, where x cannot equal 1, negative 1 half, and then still a restriction, which would be positive 1 half. And again, if you're not getting those answers, set each factor equal to 0, because those are the values that would make it equal to 0. OK? Huh? 